Hi, I'm Tim. I am the Tinkering Turtle. Today we're going to do another unboxing of a Magicycle e-bike. Today we're going to un unbox the Ocelot and it happens to be the Ocelot Pro. This is a bike I was very much looking forward, looking forward to doing. I started working with Magicycle this summer. I was hoping to have this six weeks ago, but there was a little snafu. One of the marketing guys I was working with went back to college and it got delayed but we've got it here it's the middle of October so I'm hoping we get some good ride time in this weekend's supposed to have a couple of nice days so I'm hoping I can get this out and put 40 or 50 miles on it to really give it a good shakedown but today we're just going to do the basic assembly and possibly I might integrate the the basic setup in this video as well. Typically I'll do two videos but I've done a lot of videos and it kind of shows the same process on each bike so I think I'm going to do for the basic setup a more abbreviated um, setup video. If you do want a more in-depth video um, you might want to check out the other Magicycle uh, videos I've done um, for the Cruiser and see if you can glean any other information from that but today is just the basic um, unboxing, assembly, and setup for the Ocelot Pro. Let's get to it. As always, I've laid out some tools that I'm going to start with. Just basic metric hex wrench, crescent wrench, uh, box cutter, wire clippers, some zip ties, and some screwdrivers. I don't know exactly what I'm going to need yet. I'm going to start unboxing and we'll go from there. So one tip that I've shared with other bikes that I'm going to show you on this one is for unboxing I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. I am a bigger guy so I might be able to lift this bike up out of the box but it is a fairly heavy bike so I don't want to do that because I don't want to mess up my back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the straps off, I'm going to flip the box upside down, open the bottom, and then flip it back over onto the open, leave the flaps out and leave it open. Then I can just lift the box off versus lifting the bike up and out. Let's get to that. Okay, when I get the box upside down, I open it up. I'm going to try to get as many um, small boxes or packages out of the way as possible. I'm going to leave this one in because it looks like it will help it be stabilized. I think I've got pretty much everything out that I can see. There is a box down here, but I can't get to it really easily, so I'll flip it back over. When you're doing this, make sure this flap stays up. So now that I've got the box right side up again, the bottom is open, all the flaps are laid out. Now I can simply lift the box off. But be careful, the bike will be kind of unstable. As you lift the bike box up and off, you're going to want to grab the bike so it doesn't fall over. Okay, once I straightened out the handlebars so that was square and it just sits nice and flat, I'll take the box up and out of the way, grab the other components out of the Magicycle box. Tip number two, I always keep the box for about the length of the warranty. I do have room in my basement to do this. A lot of people don't so keep it as long as you can because if there is a problem with the bike and you need to repackage it and send it back, you're going to need a box. This box is a little bigger than a lot of other bike boxes I've seen, so it's nice to have this if that eventually happens. If you've had your bike for a few months and there's no problem, you're probably likely safe to, set, to get rid of the box. But again, I keep mine for a year. I've got a place down in the basement I can stack them. And 
I just recently got rid of the first couple of boxes that I had when I started the channel and I still have a bunch down there so tip number two so my next step here is I'm going to take all the packaging off the bike all the foam all the zip ties remove the front wheel off of the main bike and I'm going to put all the packaging that I take off in the box so when I'm saving the box I also have all the packaging I won't have to buy anything new in the unlikely event you have to send it back I use a pair of wire clippers and I'm just going to fast forward through the rest of this just I mean it's just unpackaging so Okay, I've got all the packaging off the bike and it's pretty stable. I did leave the fork guard on the front here just to give it some stability while it's sitting up and I'll move this over here a little bit. Everything looks good with one exception. Take a minute, look over your bike, make sure that you don't see any damage and if you do, um, take pictures of it and start talking through support. I noticed that the derailleur guard is bent way in and I don't know if the derailleur has been bent in or not. I'm going to have to, when I do my setup, I'm going to have to um, adjust that if required. Okay, let's open the uh, accessories box that came with Magis the Magicycle Ocelot. Um, this, is a, this is the Magicycle Ocelot manual. You got the headlight, good condition. Always check your parts when you take them out. Got a pair of gloves. This is always nice because if you get, sometimes the new rotors have a little bit of a grease or a film on them. You wear these, you don't get your, the oils from your fingers on the brake rotors and stuff. That will help. So you can wear these if you want or you can just be careful not to touch those items. Never a bad idea. You got a tool kit. You got the left and right pedals. And last but not least, you have the charger. And this is nice because we're going to put this to work right away. We're going to take this, we're going to take the battery out of the bike and start it charging while we're assembling the bike. That way when we get done we'll have more power to go test ride it. Okay, to remove the battery out of the bike you're going to need the keys. These are typically zip tied onto the wiring on the handlebar someplace. Get the keys. Now on this side you have a plug you can unplug that and plug the battery charger right here but I'm going to take the battery out of the bike and charge it on the bench until I get the bike assembled. To do that come to this side insert the key into the lock release it and then there's a latch underneath you have to turn and the battery comes right out. Remove the key. Okay, you'll take the cord, you'll plug it into the end of the charger. You take the bike end of the charger and there's there's three prongs here. Two look like sad eyes and then the other one looks like a mouth and you'll match that up to the battery here. Once that's firmly inserted, always insert it into the battery first and then take your plug and plug that in. The light will turn red, oh it turns green, and then red. Green means it's on, red means it's charging. When the light on the charger turns green again then your battery is fully charged. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put on the handlebars. To do that, you'll loosen the two side bolts on the handlebar stem. And they don't need to be loosened up very much, just typically half a turn or a turn, depending on how tight they are. Rotate this around so it's relatively square to the line of action. Now, one thing I want to point out, you have a top bolt here. 
Unless the fork is loose within the stem, don't mess with the top bolt. You only tighten the top bolt enough to bring the fork here up into the stem and get it so it turns smoothly, but it doesn't uh, shake around and do anything. Once it's to that tension, you stop tightening this. Do not over tighten the top bolt ever. This goes into a nut that's literally compressed into the, the fork stem and if you tighten it too much you can pull that nut out and damage the system. This is only for tensioning this assembly here. Once you get everything lined up the way you want it, then you'll tighten down the side bolts and that's what keeps the handlebars from turning independent of the forks. This is a five millimeter um, hex wrench for these by the way. So once I've got it sort of in position, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tension. I'm not going to tighten these up too much yet because once I get the handlebars on, I'll probably have to readjust those. Then with the four millimeter hex, take these four bolts out. This is the handlebar bracket. Now you bring the handlebars up, double check and make sure your wiring's not messed around too much. When you put it in place, then you're going to place the handlebar right in this concave area and kind of get the level to where you think it should be. You will adjust this later, so don't get too wound up about that. Take the handlebar bracket, put back in place. Before I do this, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. When you go to te tension these down, the handlebar bracket will have gaps at the top and bottom because the handlebar is bigger, it's not going to let you tighten these all the way down. So you're going to have gaps. What you don't want to do is tighten the bottoms all the way and then have a big gap at top or vice versa. You want to have them an equal gap at the top and the bottom. And the reason for that is you're going to get a better tension and your handlebars will be stronger. So when you're doing this, try not to over tighten the bottom and then try to tension the top or vice versa because you're not going to get the same level of clamping pressure. Keep the gaps at the top and the bottom even. Once you get the clamp in place then start the four bolts. Be cautious when you're starting these not to cross thread the bolts and it may need to take some finagling with the front bracket to get that started properly so that the bolts screw right in, you're not forcing them from the get-go. So now I've got these down, they're bottomed out on the in the bracket. I can feel that the gap at the bottom and the top is about the same. Then I'm going to do a cross tightening pattern. I'm going to tighten this one a little bit, this one a little bit, this one a little bit, this one a little bit. So it's like a crisscross pattern. And I'm going to go half a turn at a time until it tensions down. I want to make sure that, uh, that the handlebars are about in the right place. I think that's good. You can always loosen these up and readjust your handlebars, so don't get too worried about that. But for now, we're just going to get them tightened down in. Double check the gaps and then do it again. Keep doing that until it's good and tight. Don't over tighten these bolts because they are going into an aluminum piece and you don't want to strip them out. Now they're good and tight. And the gaps at the top and bottom are even. So that's the preliminary assembly of the handlebars. Again, you can adjust these just by loosening the four bolts, bending the, or turning the handlebars to where you want them and then re-tightening them and then adjusting the, the, the components on the handlebars after that. One thing I want to point out while we're still here is that this piece on the shocks is on the forward side. Some people get this turned around which puts the brake on the wrong side and it causes all kinds of issues. Make sure that this piece is forward on the bike. Okay, the next step is to remove the nut and washer off the back side of this bolt here. Slide the bolt out. You're going to want to put it through the headlight and into the shock and then hang the fender off of the back side and put the nut and washer back on. Now before I tighten this bolt up I want to take the the fender stays 
and I want to turn those down, remove these bolts. They're a four millimeter hex wrench. Put the bolts back in and tighten them down. I don't think there's any real adjustment on this fender other than up and down. So you can go ahead and tighten these up. Do that on both sides. That's nice and tight. Now with the crescent wrench and a five millimeter hex wrench, you want to hold on to the nut on the back and tighten this bolt down. Bend this uh, light up out of the way so you have access for your tools. Now what I'm going to do before I tighten it all the way, I want to lift the fender up so this is sticking up a little bit. That gives me the most room to the uh, wheel when I put it on of the rubber of the tire. And if I need to, I can always lower it later, but for assembly, I want that up as high as I can get it. Once I get that close, I want to reorient the headlight before finishing up. Then you can tilt the headlight down. Okay, the last thing we need to do is connect the headlight connector. You'll find that on this one, there's a small slot in the bottom and then two pins. And then the, the male side, you're going to find two pins. And then there's going to be a rib. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll zoom in and see if you can see that. And there's also arrows on both this side and this side. You're going to want to line those up when you put them together. The way I like to do it is I'll take the rib that's in this side. I'll line it up with the slot that's on this side like so. So I know they're in the right place. I'll rotate it together and I'll push the connector straight together. Do not twist these connectors. Pull them, all, pull them straight in and straight out. Next thing you want to do is unscrew the skewer and pull it out. What's going to come off is a conical spring and a nut. And you'll find another conical spring on this side of the skewer. The way the springs work is you're going to want the big side out and the little side in towards the center of the axle. And you're going to want to do that on both. The big side's out, the little side's in. That's very important. Make sure that spring is put on correctly. Another thing I want to say about this is the lever side of the skewer is always on the side with the brake caliper and the rotor. Next thing you can do is put your foot here and lift the bike up off of that guard. This guard is just to protect the forks from getting damaged in transit. Okay, there's one last thing we have to do before we lift the bike up and put the wheel in place. And that is in between the two pads on this caliper, there is a guard. This removable guard is to protect the two pads on the brake from squeezing in when there's no rotor in there. Because what happens, and this is a really important tip, please pay attention. Do not squeeze your brake handles when this is removed. This is to protect these pistons from popping out. So right now if I were to go up there and squeeze the brake handle, the, these pads would come together and the pistons on each side would pop out of their socket. Once that happens, these calipers are ruined. They're done. You have to replace them. So if you remove this, make sure you put the rotor back in right away. Do not squeeze the brake handle while there's nothing in between the pads. That's not a good thing to do at all with hydraulic brakes and you will ruin them. I picked the bike up. And you're going to want to line up the rotor to slide in between those pads and set it down on that axle. Once the tire's in place, you can put down the kickstand and lean it over. Now take your skewer, slide it through the center. Make sure when you put this spring on, the big side is away from the bike and the little side is towards the center of the axle. Once that's done, start your nut on. 
Now here's a tip. Always pick the bike up off the kickstand because sometimes when it's kicking on the kickstand, the axle will get wonky in the, uh, in the skewer sets. And you want to sit it up straight and I hold it with my knees and then finish tightening it down. This ensures the forks are all the way down on that axle. Try not to touch the rotor with your fingers. Okay, another thing I do is when I put the, the, ca the cam lever up, I always push it up. And the reason I make it go up is then if I'm riding and I look down and I see it's flopping down here, I know that it's come loose and I need to stop and re redo it. So if it's pointing up, gravity will swing it back down. And that's the assembly of the front tire. And the brake rotor seems perfectly centered. If it's not centered, then there's two bolts here. You'll loosen those up, not, not too much, just enough to give it a little play. You'll, now that the rotor's in place, you'll squeeze the brake handle up above and then tighten these back down and that should center it on the rotor. So again, the process is loosen these slightly, squeeze the brake handle while squeezing it, tighten these two back down and then release the brake handle up above. If you don't have anybody help you, use a clamp or a shoestring or something like that to hold the, to hold the brake handle while you're tightening these back in. Once that's done, it should be centered on the rotor and you shouldn't have any more additional issues. Okay, the last thing we need to do for basic assembly is assemble the pedals. Now, when they come from MagiCycle, they have little stickers on them for left and right. So when you're sitting on the bike, the left-hand side is this side, the right-hand side is that side. You wanna make sure you put the pedals on the correct side. If you put the left-hand side on the right-hand side of the bike, the threads will not match. These are clockwise and counterclockwise threads. And if you put them on the, in the wrong crank arm, you're gonna strip out the, the threads in the crank arm and you're gonna ruin your crank arm, you're gonna have to replace them. So make sure the left is on the left side of the bike and the right is on the right side of the bike. Now, if you lose the sticker, there's little stamps that you can't really see on the video, but there's little stamps that have an R and an R and an L and an L. They're hard to see, but they are there. So if you lose the sticker, you can still tell. So this is the left hand. I'm gonna put the right hand over here so I know for sure I'm not putting it in the wrong way. Now this takes a 16 millimeter open-ended wrench. I like using the open-ended wrench over the crescent wrench because the width of the wrench itself has to fit in these flats and not bottom out on the crank and most of the time my crescent wrench is too wide here to do that. So an easy way to remember this is to start the threads to put them in you're going to rotate it towards towards the front of the bike over the top towards the front of the bike and it should thread right in like that once you get it in as far as you can do by fingers, then you'll take your wrench and you'll tighten it in so it's nice and snug. And that's it. Just repeat for the other side. When you put it in here, instead of going this way, which you would think, you rotate towards the front of the bike, up and over towards the front of the bike. And this is reversed from the other side. If you have resistance putting it in, you got to be careful you're not cross-threading it. Make sure you get these in good and tight. You may even want to use a little Loctite on these. And check them after the first few rides and make sure they're not backing out. You don't want this to get loose and strip out the threads on here because then you either have to try to repair the threads or replace the entire crank arm and that requires a special tool to get the crank arm off the bike. Now the basic assembly for the bike is done. I do want to show you how to adjust the height of the seat. You open the cam lock and you lift it up 
tighten the cam lock down. That cam lock's a little loose. So you lift this up and you tighten that down. Now here's the trick. When you put your heel on the pedal, heel, your leg should be straight when sitting on the seat. That's how you tell if your seat is adjusted right. Then when you bring the ball of your foot back, that should give you a nice bend in your leg, a slight bend in your leg, and that's what you want to see. So you put your heel on, adjust your heat seat to that height, which the seat needs to come up just a tad more. Put my heel on. My leg is straight. And now I've got a slight bend. That means my seat is in the right place. After you get it to this point where you're in the basic area, then you can adjust your seat up and down slightly for comfort to meet what you want to do. And that's the setup of the bike and unboxing. Go ahead and peel the stickers off of the gear shift, the screen, the headlight, and as soon as the battery's done, you can go for a ride. But before you do that, you should make some a few minor adjustments. The adjustments are really pretty simple. You'll adjust the brake calipers to center up on the rotor. The front one feels good. The back one has a slight rub in this one, so I'm going to have to adjust that. I'll show you how to do it. You should also adjust the indexing on your derailleur to make sure the chain is hitting the proper gear, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Now to check the front caliper, I lift the bike spin the tire and I don't hear any noise. So that means that the rotor is centered in the caliper. Now to check the back one, the brake pad's already on. I'm just gonna lean the bike up on its kickstand here so the tire's off the ground. And I can hear the rotor rubbing on the brake pad and the tire stopped prematurely. So I'm gonna set it back down. Remember these two bolts that I showed you on the front? I'm going to loosen those up just half a turn or a turn. You don't have to loosen them up a whole bunch. And since I don't have anybody to help me today, I'm going to put a clamp on the brake. That squeezes the brake pads onto the rotor down here. And I'm going to come down here, tighten these two bolts back up. And I like to give these little quarter turns until they're tight. That helps not pull the caliper out of alignment. And those are good and tight. Then remove the caliper. Lift the bike up onto the kickstand. Okay, so I still have a slight rub. What I'm going to do is loosen one of these up. I loosen both of them up. I make a slight adjustment. Once I get it centered, I tighten these up and I'm done. Now there's a very slight rub here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go take it for a ride and wear the pads in a little bit, and then I'll worry about fine tune adjusting that. Um, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna get a clean rag and some isopropyl alcohol and clean the rotors off front and back to make sure that there's no oil or residue on the brake calipers. That'll help eliminate any possible squeaks. So I got some isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag. I'm just going to put a little isopropyl alcohol. Be careful not to touch the rotor with your fingers. I just want to clean any oil or residue from the surface of that rotor off. See how it's getting a little black? You want to get that all that oil off on both sides. If you don't feel comfortable doing this with your fingers because you might touch it, then get a pair of or use those gloves that came with the bike and that'll protect you. If you're like me and you've done this a hundred times, I just use I just I just put the rag in there and I make sure not to touch it with my fingers. And once I got that section done, I'll lean it over, clean the rest of the rotor. Do this on both the front and the bike back. And if you can, do it before you ride the bike because you don't want that oil or residue getting onto the brake pads because it'll cause a squeak. Then you'll have to take the calipers off, remove the brake pads, clean them, re-clean the rotor, 
and put it all back together. I want to point out I'm also going to keep this protective clip in case I ever need to take the front wheel off. I need to protect those pads again. I'll put that in the MagiCycle box. Those are nice and clean. Now let's take a look at the indexing on the rear wheel. Okay, to start this process, lean the bike up on the kickstand, pedal it a little bit. Now up above on the gear shift, it says I'm in, I'm in gear four. The biggest one is gear one, gear two, gear three, and I'm on gear four. Then I got gear five, six, and seven as you come down. What you're listening for here is any kind of clicking sound that's not smooth and clean. So when I did that, that's a pretty clean sound. This is the indexer. If you're not getting a clean sound or if you're on the wrong gear, what you do is you'll turn this tumbler counterclockwise to move the chain that way and clockwise to move the chain this way. And I'm gonna do it just to show you. I'm gonna move it a few rotations. You see, not only now am I on third gear while the gear shift says fourth, but you hear sound too, listen. You hear, see how that's a little bit louder? So then you'll turn it to bring the chain back down onto fourth, you'll turn it clockwise, give it a couple turns. See how loud it is? That tells you you're not centered on that particular gear. Turn it a couple more. Okay, now you're on the fourth gear. Now you do the fine tune adjustments just to get rid of any extra noise until it's like that. It's perfectly smooth and quiet. Okay. Now to double check that everything's good, you'll go up above. Okay, I'm in seventh gear here on the sprocket. I'm gonna check up above. Now it says six, but it, it won't go any further, which is weird. You'll change it down one gear, lean it up. So now I'm on sixth gear, fourth gear, third gear. second gear and first gear. So a couple things jump out of me. First, now when I look at this needle, it's well below first gear. So this is broken. Something in here is messed up. Um, I don't know if that was damaged. There is a slight crack in the housing. I don't know if it was damaged in shipping, but this is reading below one, even though I'm in one here. So Everything's set up and, and going from gear to gear to gear properly, but for some reason this isn't right. So I'll have to contact support and see if there's any help for that or if I need to get a new derailleur up here, derailleur uh, shifter up here. The second thing I noticed is that the second thing I noticed that in first gear, this chain is right on the fender and the, the wheel is centered in the frame. The fender is centered as well. I don't think that can be adjusted. So I'm not sure what to do about that. I don't know if I need to cut that out. I will contact support about that as well. But beyond the potentially broken gear shift and the rubbing for the chain onto the wheel, at this point the bike is set up. The only thing I need to do is reinstall the battery and take it for a ride. But I'm going to wait until the battery charges all the way up. That'll probably be in the next video I show that. This video was about unboxing, assembly, and doing the basic adjustments. I'm going to shoot a couple emails off to support and see if they can help me with the last few things. I'm going to go over the bike and I'm going to tighten up all the bolts just to make sure nothing's loose.
One big one I always do is I always take an Allen wrench and I put it in both sides of the crank and I tighten this bolt down because a lot of times these will be loose on newer bikes. So double check this one and the one on the other side as well. And then just go around and just generally check bolts and to make sure they're tightened up and you should be all set to ride for your first time. All in all, this was a very easy setup. I've probably one of the easier bikes that I had to set up. Like I said, a couple minor issues that I'm gonna work out. I had to bend that derailleur guard out by hand. Um, the indexing's perfect on the rear wheel. I usually don't use first gear, so it's not gonna affect me riding the bike, but I will see what I can do about getting a replacement for this up here and get that fixed. Or maybe support has a way for me to get in there and adjust it, I don't know yet. The last thing I wanna mention before I let you go is tire pressure. Both these tires, being a four inch fat tire, the maximum PSI you can put in the tire is 30. I typically don't run at the max. I have heard of people doing that. I don't like doing it because sometimes if you hit a, a hard bump, and I mean you have to hit it really hard, but you can pop the bead off and um, you know lose pressure. I tend to run because I have asphalt bike paths where I ride everywhere. I don't really ride on dirt or gravel or sand. I usually keep them about 25 PSI. Conventional wisdom for tire pressures on a fat tire bike are 20 PSI for roads, like I ride. I like it a little bit firmer, I like it at 25. 15 for dirt, and then seven to 10 for sand. That's just conventional wisdom. Typically when you ask a lot of people, eventually you're gonna get those answers. So I've adjusted the handlebars. If you need to, you can adjust your um, brake levers and your controller and your bell to get those where you need them to be your screen in the next video i'm going to put the battery in i'm going to show you how to start it up what some of the buttons do real basic stuff i'm not going to go into the settings at this point because the settings on this screen is usually pretty cut and dry it's pretty simple to figure out i may do a video on that in the future but for now i'm probably not going to bother with it and then i'm going to take it for a ride and like i said this weekend i'm hoping to put 40 or 50 miles on and give you a good final review and or at least first review and see where we're at with the whole bike. I like the way it's set up. It seems like a well-built bike. The welds are nice. I don't have a lot of chips. I've got small chips in the paint here and there. One thing I want to note about the Magicycles is the motor cable comes in underneath the axle, not through the center of the axle. Some bike companies run the motor cable through the center of the axle which I think weakens the axle. Magicycle doesn't do that. They run it underneath. So now the axles, now that they're, they're on there, are stronger. I do like the build quality because they just seem really beefy. The head tube's nice and beefy. The frame's always nice and beefy. There's not a lot of torque or flex in it. They're just really nice bikes. They rival a lot of the other bikes out there and the fact that they're 52 volt and they have a higher torque makes hill climbing so much easier. So I'm really excited to get this out on the road. If you made it to this part of the video, thank you so much. Click subscribe, leave me a thumbs up and I will catch you next time.